All right, guys, welcome to part one of the milled AK receiver tutorial. And um, like I said, we're going to be running with the original prints for this one and the content, the print itself, and a step file of my uh, first edition run of this is located on the intro to this series. So if you want to go to the intro video and download the files for your viewing and to aid you in the uh, creation of this part with me, uh, feel free to do that and come on back. For everyone else, uh, let's get started right away. I'm going to create a new part. I'm running uh, 2016 now, so if you're questioning what my layout's all about, uh, that's the new interface for SolidWorks 2016. Um, if you're running a an earlier version of SolidWorks, there's not much that's changed functionality wise it does look different and some of the icons don't really look the same anymore um so try and work through it if you can if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments and i will be sure to help out as best as i can um so let's get started i'm gonna sketch off of my front plane and let's look at the print for a minute here so ideally what I want to do, since this is a milled part, is I want to start out with the maximum material condition and then essentially cut away at the, at the block that I'm going to be creating as if I'm using um, an actual mill. Because there are a lot of errors that can occur in modeling here if you subtract a bunch of stuff and then add pieces back and a good example of that is actually the model that my friend gave me when he first asked me to do this for him um let's roll back his tree a minute as you can see he didn't finish because there was quite a bit of confusion regarding the print and that's where i came in and decided i was going to help him out on this um, so let's go to his very first step, which is actually the exact same way I started out, and that is the maximum material condition of the receiver. That's that's the most material that the part can have prior to machining. So ideally what they would do is they would actually forge this whole block and get all the general shapes and features there, and then they would start making um, milled cuts at this. And and over, you know, I don't know how many hours or days it would take to machine an entire receiver, but obviously whittle it, apart, whittle it away part by part until you've got your desired piece. So um, I totally agree with his first step here. and. Following that, his second step is, where did that cut go? There it is, the back. That's where the stock is going to plug into the receiver. And then he's got his screw cuts there. So we're just going to, we're going to kind of fast forward through this real quick to this step. This is the one that I had a big issue with. He hollowed out the entire receiver and then he started building it back up from the inside and I explained to him that my problems with this are that a lot of the angles and edges you're creating in here are this isn't so bad right here but the as we keep going here you'll see um, a mill isn't actually going to be able to do some of that stuff um, let's just keep going the funny part about it is his tree is super long, but it's really about a third of how long mine ended up being after finishing this part. So that's as far as he got. And, um, he ended up sending this to me and having me try and tackle it. So 
Um, we both actually have the original prints for the AK, and I had a project going on for probably about the last year where I've just been piecing or paging through rather all of the prints and just picking up whatever I wanted to model and then recreating the prints to modernize them and everything. And this one, I, you know, honestly didn't even really want to tackle until last. But when he came to me with this, I was like, yeah, this is cool. Let's do it. Um, all right. So that's a preview of kind of where he got, and we are going to tackle it on our own now. So I'm going to close his and get back to ours. And again, start my sketch on the front plane. Ideally, this is the view we're going to kind of want to consult for dimensions, but they are they're everywhere. So if you um, I'm not really going to spend too much time showing you where the dimensions that I'm getting are coming from, because obviously I've modeled this already and I've spent some time doing it. So if you are hunting dimensions down and not really keeping up with the video, you're, you're going to have to pause and, and come back as you as you find them. So that way everyone else can stay on task. So I'm going to move this over to my second monitor here and get started. So my origin, I'd like to be um, on the plane of my, where my barrel is actually going to come through this receiver. So I'm just going to draw a construction line from the origin back to the left. And we'll get our first dimension here, 260.3 millimeters. And then from there, I'm going to take my line tool and just draw a basic line to start with. We'll let it float out in space. And... We're going to model from, or dimension rather, not yet, I need one more line. This line here is the, essentially the top of the receiver, where the bolt is going, bolt carrier is actually going to ride and interface on the very top. And that's a critical line to start with. So we're going to leave that where it is and model or dimension this line to my barrel center line, which is 5.5 .5 millimeters. And from there, I know that the top, the very top of the trunnion, which is where the barrel screws in to the receiver, is 17 millimeters and then um, I'm gonna hold control down grab my origin and then grab my line release control and I can make coincident snap it right in place so now that lines fully defined and now I'm gonna draw just the general shape of the trunnion area doesn't have to be exact and this line here, hit escape, grab this one and make it horizontal. And we'll grab some dimensions here. Here to here is 63 millimeters. And here to here is 19 millimeters. got 12 millimeters six point five millimeters and then 35 degrees so let me just get a little bit organized here I like to keep my dimensions and everything tidy Throw this one down here. <clears throat> okay, so that's the top. 
Now what we want is to go towards the bottom and from the front the bottom edge to the rail first or top rail is 33 millimeters. And then I'm going to grab my line tool and just drag one on a diagonal back, just roughly where it's got to end. It doesn't have to be exact yet. And then we'll come back to the rear side of the receiver here. And we're going to make these two points vertical. And then we're going to drop a line from here back. And my barrel line is going to come through our geometry here, which that's, that's perfectly okay. We don't have to actually have to care too much about that. Um, but you can see from the print that we're at an angle back here of... 10 degrees. So I'm actually going to take the vertical that I created. Oh, there's not one there. Sorry. It's my dimension line. I'm going to create a center line vertical here, and that's going to be what I'm going to use to dimension to to create that 10 degrees. I'll come down here with that 10. And then we have the We'll trim my extra lines here. We have the total height dimension from the back at 44 millimeters. Now the next part is going to be the, the tail that the stock actually bolts to, um, the stock flange. So. There are quite a few dimensions there to interpret. Um, like I said, if you got to pause the video and kind of explore the print and study it a little bit, please do that. Um, I'm going to just rough it out quick where everything should line up. And there is going to be an interference over here, which I'll show you how to take care of in a second. Like I said, just going to rough this out it doesn't have to be exact trim this let's zoom in on this corner a second because if you look at the print there's there's some phantom lines going on there that are trying to show you where this is actually coming off of the receiver so what i'm going to do is i'm going to dimension this corner here quick and i know from where the theoretical end point of the receiver is to the um, stock flange, the top tang of it is one millimeter. So now what I'm going to do is I've actually added this to my sketch tools. It's called split entities. But if you don't have this, um, you're going to have to go up to options and go to add-ins. Or I'm sorry, not add-ins. Customize. <clears throat> You're going to go under, com under commands and go underneath the sketch category and you'll find it in here somewhere. Again, if you're on an earlier version of SolidWorks, these are going to look obviously like the old style. So you'll just have to hover over them. I'm sure it's pretty similar. I can't actually remember what it looks like. Um, I'm pretty sure it's similar to this. If it's not in the exact spot, you'll just have to kind of hover around until you find the description. It's called split entities. And you're going to click it and drag it up into your toolbar, wherever you'd like to place it. And what this tool does is if we click it, I can zoom in here. And since I've got an interference here, I can split this entity and this one. And hit escape to terminate it. Now I can drag this endpoint anywhere I want. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a coincident lock over that point there, grab this line and make it a construction line. And I'm gonna do the same here where this 
um, intersection is. Grab that short end or short segment and make it a construction line. So now later on when I extrude my model, it's not going to have me select the interior or the boundary of where I want to extrude because anything that's a phantom line, it's going to automatically exclude. Um, and we'll have a couple more to do here in a second, but I'm going to actually get some dimensions down on this first. Okay, so my next step. Is going to be this dimension from here oh, yep, from here to my end point and it's going to be five millimeters and then I've got an angle of 150 degrees and let's get back to adding relations so I know this line and this line are parallel so again my, my little trick for that was grab the line hold control grab the other line release control and it brings my menu right up next to my cursor I'm going to make those parallel the next relation I know is that this line and either one of these entities are perpendicular. Oops. And it's already got one. Where is that? Okay, see, that's wrong. So it, it automatically snapped these two. If you look what's highlighted in pink, those two entities as perpendicular. So that's not a problem. I'm just going to delete that relation and then go back and add it to the segment that I want and now I'm going to dimension from this line to this line and we don't want degrees actually that's another relation I need to add so this entity and this entity are actually parallel, which helps us out a bit. So I'll throw that in there. Uh, that's what I was looking for. Now my top lines here are fully defined. I was waiting for those to go black. So now I'll, I'll dimension from here all the way back, and we're looking at 37 millimeters there. Okay, next is the thickness of the flange. So I'm going to grab these two entities. Drag my dimension back, which is three millimeters. And so we're fully defined now, but you'll see I've also got another interference here. So what I'm going to do is go back and use my split entities tool and just split it somewhere right there. Drag my points coincident and then turn this into construction geometry, which it doesn't appear that it did. Let's see here. Let me, let me delete this a second. Oh, okay. That was my dimension line confusing me. So I'm going to undo that quick. There we go. My dimension line is overlapping that. So what I'm going to do is actually let's get normal two here again. I'm going to highlight my dimension, find the end point here. I'm actually going to drag it back. Oops. Actually, let me just redimension this quick so I can see better. I'm going to delete my dimension, grab smart dimension, and my vertical line here. Come all the way down 10 degrees. There we go. Now I can see that construction line. Grab this endpoint and move it up too. There we go. There, now my 
construction lines are clearly defined here. So you can see we're actually dimensioned out to a phantom point where the end of the receiver theoretically ends relative to the two colliding or intersecting points here. So that is the basic shape we're going for. Now what I'd like to do before we extrude this is go in and add the remaining fillets that I can get rid of right away in the sketch. So I know that the radius in this corner here is one millimeter. And I know the radius here is three millimeters. And that's as much as I want to physically um, cut right now, but there is more we can do with this sketch still. So um, let me let me look at the print here a minute. Okay, so, um, sorry, I guess I could have explained to you what I was looking at here. What I'd like to do is lay out these holes as construction lines and this cut back here. Um, actually, I might even take this cut out right now, but in case I want to um, change this feature later, that's actually why I planned on making it its own separate feature. Um, but I'm going to lay out all these holes as construction geometry so that all I have to do is show the sketch and I can grab these later on and extrude them later on during the uh, actual creation of the interior of the receiver. So I'm going to move this back over here to my second monitor and start laying out those holes. So I'm going to grab my circle tool. And I know I'm using my, my default menu up here, and that's strictly for you guys. I do have a bunch of hotkeys and stuff that I can use and some shortcut menus that I can bring up on screen. But I figured keep it nice and basic so that if anyone's using um, default controls, um, they don't have to kind of go, well, where is he with it? Where did he get that command? I didn't see where he grabbed that. So I'm, I'm using all the default menus. Um, and I just noticed, looking at the print here, that I did forget a feature that I wanted to add. So I'm just going to finish up laying the holes in their general location. And then I'm going to go back and show you what I missed. So there's a a lobe or a section, a lump, I guess you could call it, for lack of a better term, where the uh, magazine release and the front of the trigger, trigger guard get riveted to the bottom of the receiver. And I forgot to add that in. So I'm going to sketch its general shape here. And parallel is good. Perpendicular, I don't want. So I'm going to delete these relations quick. And then throw my dimensions on here. So this is 120. And this one's also 120. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two lines, throw my dimension down, hit the equals key, and click this dimension, hit the check mark. So now this is a driving dimension. When I click this and edit it, this one will automatically change to equal that dimension. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is grab a construction line from this end way out here. We'll just let it float for now. And we're going to hold control, grab these two lines, and make them collinear. And since this line and this line are already parallel, I don't have to worry about making this one parallel with this one. But I am going to use my trim tool and get rid of this now since we don't need it. And then I'm going to model, or sorry, dimension off of my rail surface. 
We're going to call this the top of the receiver from now on. I know this is technically the very top, but we're going to call this the top of the receiver, and this is the top of the trunnion. So I'm going to go from the top of the receiver to the end point of my construction line here. And we're going to make this 34.5 millimeters. And then the next thing I'm going to do is grab my end point, hold control, and grab this front, the front of my receiver, and make them coincident. So now you can see my geometry is locked and fully defined. But down here, we're not yet. And that's because I'm missing two more dimensions. So grab my smart dimension and this line, or that point rather, this point. And we're going to come out until we get a, there we go, a perpendicular dimension. And the way I did that, actually, we can, I'll show you two ways. First way I did it was I went out to the very left until my line snapped perpendicular to what I was measuring. And then I right clicked on the screen to lock it in that position so that now when I rotate around, it's not going to, let me unlock it and show you what happens. See, now it's going to snap to a bunch of different locations, but I want just this one. So if I right-click in the position that I want, it will stay there. The other alternative I can do is come back down to this point and put some center lines down. Make this one and this one collinear, and this one and this one perpendicular. And then I can grab my smart dimension and come off this perpendicular line. And then this point out here. And that will ensure that I'm, in fact, perpendicular. So we'll just, I'll leave it this way. You can select whichever method you'd like to use. That's going to be 115 millimeters. And then the last dimension, again, I'm going to grab this line and this point to ensure perpendicularity. And that is 21 millimeters. Let me clean up my dimensions here. Now let's get back to these holes. All right, so... The diameter of all four is five millimeters. So this will be my first one, five millimeters. Now what I'm going to do is grab this hole and hold control and grab the other three, release control, and I'm going to make all four equal to one another. So now only one dimension drives all four circles or holes. Next, they're all dimensioned relative to the front of the receiver. So I'm going to grab my smart dimension and start dimensioning. We've got 134.5 millimeters. And from that hole to this hole is 14.5 millimeters with a vertical distance of 3.3 millimeters. And the height from the top of the receiver to the center of this hole is 27.5 millimeters. And then we're gonna go back to these. And we've got 173.5 millimeters. From here to here is seven millimeters. And 20 millimeters. Twenty three. All right, so those are all fully defined. And the next section is going to be that the slot up in the top corner where the dust cover snaps in. So let's zoom in up over here. 
And I'm just going to sketch the general shape of it in there. And you know what? Let's just add this in right away. It just makes sense. So I'm going to trim my line here. And then, OK, what is this? That's my dimension line. OK. Let me just move this out. I don't know why they all want to snap way down here, but it's kind of annoying. There, so I've got them all out of the way now. Okay. I know that these two lines are parallel. If you've noticed the theme, it's that I like to add all of my relations before I add dimensions. And that's strictly because a lot of the time you can drive things with geometry rather than numbers. And I like to do that to keep clutter to a minimum. So from the end point to top of the notch is 3.5 millimeters. And the depth is 3.5. And the bottom length, actually, let's grab the line, is 5. There we go. OK, so let's make these holes construction geometry. There we go. OK, so. How thick is our receiver? Thirty four millimeters. All right, we're ready to extrude. Actually, before we do that, let me just again clean up my dimension lines here. I don't really like when they intersect because it, um, interferes with what I'm trying to show a lot of the time. So there we go. That that way you can differentiate between what's actually an object line and what's a dimensioning line. So we're going to go up to features, extrude, and we are going to extrude over the mid plane 34 millimeters. And finish. And that is step one. And I am about three minutes over the half hour mark. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. And part two will continue right where I left off here. Thanks for watching.